The esophagus is also called a gullet or a food pipe. It's a muscular tube that runs from the, your mouth all the way to the stomach, sitting in the chest, and it transports food and drink from the mouth all the way to the stomach. Esophageal cancer happens when abnormal cells in the esophagus multiply uncontrollably, leading to the formation of a cancer lump. There are two main types of esophageal cancer that we see, squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma is usually found in cells lining the top part of the esophagus, whereas adenocarcinoma usually affects the middle and particularly the lower part of the esophagus. The severity of the esophageal cancer, however, depends on its location within the esophagus, its size, and also whether it's spread to other parts of the body, uh, but also your overall health. Factors that can increase the risk of developing esophageal cancer include smoking, drinking too much alcohol, being overweight, and a condition known as Barrett's esophagus. However, it's important to understand that anyone can develop this form of cancer. Recognizing the signs of esophageal cancer can be difficult as they are similar to other conditions. However, being aware of these symptoms can help in early detection and treatment. You may get digestive issues such as dysphagia, which is a difficulty in swallowing. This is a very common early sign. Other symptoms can happen such as nausea and vomiting, which doesn't go away. You may suffer from heartburn and acid reflux, which again persists for a period of time and doesn't go away. And then also indigestion type symptoms such as excessive burping or bloating. Other symptoms to watch out for include a cough that doesn't get better with time, a hoarse voice where you, you feel your voice is changing, unexplained weight loss, which is happening without you trying to lose weight, a loss of appetite and then feeling very tired or lacking energy all the time. You may also notice pain in your chest, in your throat, particularly when swallowing. And another sign is noticing that your stool is very black or coughing up blood. If you have a previous symptoms suggestive of gastroesophageal reflux disease, you might experience some of these symptoms regularly. But over time, you might become accustomed to them. But if there's any change or worsening of these symptoms, then that should prompt a visit to your GP. It's essential that if you have any of these symptoms or you just don't feel normal in any way, that you get advice from your GP who can then refer you onwards. Finding the cancer early can improve the chances of successful treatment. If you're worried about symptoms like swallowing problems or persistent indigestion, start by seeing your GP. Depending on what you tell them and your medical background, they might arrange for you to have more tests at a hospital to check for esophageal cancer. Finding esophageal cancer early can make treatment more effective. The common tests for esophageal cancer include an endoscopy, which is a flexible tube with a camera which is used to look inside your esophagus. Sometimes small tissue samples, which we call biopsies, are taken for testing. You may also have a CT scan, which provides a detailed picture to spot any changes in your esophagus and in nearby areas, and also a different type of scan called a PET scan, where a small amount of radioactive sugar is used to highlight areas of potential cancer in your body. Some patients go on to have what we call a laparoscopy, which is a small camera placed in your abdomen under general anaesthetic for the specialist to find out where the cancer has spread. These tests help find out if you have cancer, where it is and how severe it might be. This information guides the best treatment plan for you. Once all these test results are available to your doctors, usually within two weeks, your doctor will explain what they mean to you and discuss the next steps with you. If esophageal cancer is diagnosed, a team of specialists will be there to support you throughout your journey, including a dedicated clinical nurse specialist who can answer any questions you might have. After your cancer is diagnosed, you may need more tests such as MRI scans, CT scans or PET CT scans to help further plan your treatment. It's important to stick to the recommended tests and treatments with your healthcare team to give yourself the best chance of treating esophageal cancer. Esophageal cancer can often be treated. The type of treatment you will have depends on various factors. The size and type of the cancer, its location within the esophagus, whether it has spread to other parts of the body, and your overall health. Your treatment plan might include a combination of surgery, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and immunotherapy. Your specialist teams will support you throughout your treatment journey. They will explain the different treatments available, their benefits and potential side effects. They will discuss the treatment plan with you to make sure it is personalized to your needs. And they will help you in managing any treatment related side effects, including dietary changes. 
Throughout your treatment and afterwards, you will have regular checkups, tests and scans. If you experience any worrying symptoms or side effects, you can always contact your clinical nurse specialist before your next scheduled checkup. If the cancer is detected early and hasn't spread, surgery might be an option. The surgeon will typically remove most or all of the esophagus along with the surrounding lymph nodes. They will reconstruct the esophagus using the stomach to allow you to eat and drink again. This is a long and challenging operation and not every patient will be fit enough to undergo it. Chemotherapy involves using medication to target and destroy cancer cells. You might receive chemotherapy in the following scenarios. You may receive this before surgery, which helps control and sometimes shrink the cancer, and after surgery, where it eliminates any remaining cancer cells and reduces the risk of cancer recurrence. It can sometimes be combined with radiotherapy, and this is known as chemoradiotherapy. It can also be used for symptom relief, especially in advanced stages of the disease. Radiotherapy uses high energy radiation to destroy cancer cells. It can be used alongside chemotherapy for early stage cancer, but also to reduce symptoms in advanced stages. These treatments aim to halt the growth of cancer cells and boost your immune system's ability to fight the cancer. You might receive immunotherapy if the cancer has spread to other areas of the body, when a cure isn't possible, or to reduce the chances of the cancer coming back after it is surgically removed. If the cancer is advanced and can't be cured, the focus shifts to managing symptoms and improving your quality of life. This can be emotionally challenging to accept. In such cases, you will be referred to a dedicated team called a palliative care or symptom control team. They will help manage your symptoms to make you as comfortable as possible. Your clinical nurse specialist or the palliative care team can also provide support and guidance to you and your loved ones. Remember, you are not alone in this journey. Your healthcare team is there to support you and guide you every step of the way. <laughs>